If you are investing in the Cleveland market, you came to the right place because this is the place where you get knowledge, resources, insight, unlike any where else right you can't get the type of stuff i'm giving out here on this show right i'm unapologetic i cut through the bs and i get you right to what you need to know does the son bitch make me money or will it lose me money today we're looking at this multifamily property we're going to do a complete rundown for two of my clients from california who have it under contract right because they know before we drop thousands and thousands of dollars, we got to get the true insight from Jay Wise. Let's jump in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks, the show where I work with everyday people like you to help you maximize your gains in real estate and minimize your losses, right? That's how you make money. You max your gains, you minimize your losses. Now, two of my clients, Walter and his investment partner, right? You guys are California dudes, and you guys sent three properties to me, right? Three properties to have me analyze. You're under contract on all three of these. You have them contingent on inspections, but before you even drop that 600 bucks on the inspector, you need to know from your boy Jay Wise what's going on, what's the validity of the investment, what's the return going to be, things of that nature, right? Because, because, gentlemen, inspectors inspect inside the four walls. Jay Wise gets you outside the four walls, teaches you what you can do with these properties from a business owner standpoint. Now, this one, I'm glad you guys sent this to me, and I'm glad I can get in there before your inspector, right? Because your first one, that was a dud. There's really, like, no reason for you guys to pursue that further. You got to kill that contract, move on. That one stunk, okay? This one's very different. This one can go either way, right? This one, as far as the neighborhood goes, 20821 Wrecker Ave, Euclid, 44119. List price, 70 Gs, been on the market for 49 days. Now, this neighborhood, unlike the previous neighborhood, that's an F-grade neighborhood. Blighted, high-risk, ghetto, just the roughest of the roughest, right? If you're in for a battle, that's an F-class neighborhood. You will fight tooth and nail for every fucking dollar in a neighborhood like that, right? That's a tough way to make a living. Very, very tough. I usually don't recommend out-of-state investors do F-grade stuff, right? It's too difficult. This, though, B, right? B. B is good for out-of-state investors. I like it. By the way, when I'm referencing these grades, A, B, F, C, shit like that, ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. That's where it is, right? That should be your investment Bible, dude. That's your investment company. I graded all the neighborhoods in the, great in Cleveland, ah, in the greater Cleveland area on an A to F scale, right? A, high price, low risk. Think mostly owner-occupants. Think the wealthy people, right? That's where people who make a lot of money in the Cleveland neighborhoods, that's where, that's where we live. F, poorest of the poor, most dangerous of the dangerous, the toughest places, right? If you can't live anywhere else, you're living there, right? Nobody really is living there because they like the location, right? It's very, very tough. So last one, F, mm, tough deal. This one, B, good, very good rental neighborhood, right? Low B, high C. Now, we got some issues, though, right? I like the neighborhood. I like it for investors, right? As far as rents go, you got uh, a vacant, vacant building here. But market rents, you're looking at $750 per unit. So you could be bringing in $1,500 or $18,000. Now, if you factor in your fixed and variable expense estimates for the year, you don't get to keep the eighteen grand. Of course, you guys are aware of that, right? You would be clearing approximately $9,269 a year. But... We got to factor this in, right? So where you dudes are at, you guys have this thing under contract at 60 k And now we got to really dive into this property, right? Because this is where it gets a little dicey, right? You can't pay 60 k by the way, fellas. I can't have you paying 60 k That's not going to work, all right? Because uh, according to the listing agent and information you guys gave me from the listing agent, because we don't have any other photos, right? So this is all going based off of just what you guys are telling me. You guys gave me a copy of the point of sale report. 
uh, there are certain neighborhoods in the Cleveland market that have point of sale reports uh, requirements. Euclid is one of them. I have a video in the show notes that explains all about the POS process in the Cleveland market. If you guys are invested in Cleveland, you need to know that, right? So check that out after this one. But I don't have any other photos. So all I have to go off of is what you guys told me, what I saw in the listing from the listing agent, and what's in that city POS report, okay? Now, based upon all that information, the listing agent, he says this motherfucker needs everything. And he says it's priced accordingly. I believe him that it needs everything. I don't believe this motherfucker that it's priced accordingly, okay? You guys gave me more in-depth detail about what it needs. And we got stuff down to the studs in there, right? So it's like totally down to the studs, full rental. We're doing the full turkey here, man, full turkey. In addition to that, Euclid has got a pretty, pretty nitpicky point of sale system. So based on all the violations I saw, they want you to tear down the garage. They want you to add a driveway. And what I know it typically costs to totally redo stuff like this, we got a big old rehab, okay? A really big rehab, right? We got about a $65,000 rehab coming your way, fellas. So could the deal make sense? Yeah, it could be a great asset if you get it for the right price. You could... Definitely pull off a bird deal. Uh, this is a neighborhood where you can go cash or Section 8. It's a very stable neighborhood, okay? But the issue is, the issue here is our ARV is probably going to top out at about 100 grand, okay? Give or take a little bit. Now, truth be told, if I got two tenants and they're paying 750 and I'm totally renovated, uh, I'd probably sell it on the Investment Properties for Sale show easily for like 115 But you guys are trying to do a bird deal. And when you do bird deals, which you guys have to understand, buy, renovate, rent, refinance repeat when you do bird deals the appraiser comes in and you know it's the last purchase price it's what you bought it for right there's no new purchase agreement right so when you're selling a property like when i sell one on the investment properties for sale show appraisers folks they're not like godlike figures right i got a lot of appraisers that actually contact me to get to get my take on what they should appraise shit for right because you know sold over 200 million dollars with the real estate out here right so like you know if you got a duplex in cleveland jy is you know probably the number one guy to talk to right uh so i know folks think that all oh, appraisers must be these special mythic figures that know everything not true they're just people right and people could be swayed a little bit right so when you're doing an appraisal on a property that's actually being sold do you know what sways on that appraiser the actual contract you give them where in an arm's length transaction, a seller and buyer agreed to a price. And I believe 115 is probably what I'd get people to buy this for, right? And it would probably appraise, right? But on a burr, there is no new, there's no new purchase agreement, guys. So what they're looking at is how much you paid previously. So say you flipped the some bitch in 60 days, 90 days, right? They're looking at what you paid. And then it's harder for them to, to get their minds open to stretching it to, like, the highest value. So I think sometimes on refis, uh, appraisals come in shorter than what they would come in on resales. I hope that makes sense to you guys, right? So I'm conservatively giving you 100 k 100 k ARV. So because the rehab is so big at 65 Gs, you guys can only pay 25 you can't pay 60. You can only pay 25. 25 is the most you could pay for this, man. Uh, I mean, dude, we're going to have every bit of a $65,000 rehab, dude. We got all that POS stuff outside, right, which is going to be about 20 k And then I'm thinking about 45 inside, right? So, I mean, we got to do everything and everything. Um, if you do move forward with this, like what you obviously want to do, you want to go back to your seller and be like, yo, dude, inspections tomorrow mm, now nah, we're not going to be able to do that not at not at the price we have in our contract it's not going to work you got to come down to 25 and after you get that inspector in there so long as that inspector uh doesn't cite um structural damage i'd say that 65 is probably going to be a pretty good estimate but if there's like major structural damage to that basement it just blows your whole budget you got to move on can't even buy it at 25 at that point it'd be cost prohibitive but if you don't have structural damage based on everything i've seen and heard and been told from you guys you're looking at a like a full-on fucking sixty-five thousand dollar reno here so the most you could pay is 25 because if you did that you're all in at 90 and then it'd be a juicy freaking deal because we'd get it to appraise at 100, right? Again, I believe the real true resale value is about 115, but it's really hard to stretch an appraiser from 25 to 115 without a new purchase agreement, right? So uh, with that said, uh, 
If it appraises conservatively at 100, bank kicks you back 75 grand, meaning you're only 15 grand into the deal. And that puts you at a cash on cash return of 37%, right? A 10 cap, 37% cash on cash return. Though that's what's so great about the burst strategy, right? But you can't do that at your current price, fellas. You can't do that at 65 Gs. You can only do that if you can pick this up for 25. So you got some work to do. The deal could be good if you can get it at 25. Uh, I know it's a probate deal. And I believe they haven't even, like, finished the probate process. So I, I would guesstimate this is probably, you know, kind of a long shot deal. And even if it does go through, it's probably going to take you guys six months to a year to actually get it through. Because my understanding is the probate hasn't, like, even been started. It's not going to be started until there's a purchase agreement. But you can't pay what you're under contract for, fellas. 25 and you got a screamer of a deal. Anything more, it's not worth it because you got a huge renovation to deal with, a bunch of problems, blah, 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 blah. Now, that's two of the three you sent me. It's not all doom and gloom, though. If you notice, we're actually going up the ladder. The first deal sucks at any price. This deal could be great at the right price, could be wrong at the wrong price, could be bad at the wrong price, but it can go either way. The next deal, whoo, boy, you two motherfuckers hit the mother load on that son, bitch. I see a huge profit in your future. I'm going to get you that video next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.